Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time zone you're in. Welcome to the second half of the second day of Hyperledger Global Forum 2021. Uh, I hope everyone's had a chance to enjoy a whole bunch of different sessions. Um, there's some, been some really exciting ones that I, I've been in. We had a, a great uh, event experience yesterday as well uh, that Accenture hosted a great tri trivia and DJ kind of event that was fun. I, I hope everyone's also been able to get some sleep and pace themselves, you know, meeting people that can be very exhausting. Uh, and doing it in a virtual setting, very different than doing it when we were back on the Corona Ranch last last year. But uh, I, 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 it's been, it works. It, it's been great. Um, today we have uh, a, a great series of uh, keynote speeches lined up for you uh, this morning, uh, and obviously lots more sessions this afternoon. Uh, and so, uh, but before we begin, I want to dive just into a couple of housekeeping bits and then a little bit of framing to get started. So um, I wanted to start out by uh, expressing sincere thanks to all of the sponsors that help make this event possible, to our Diamond sponsors, Accenture and IBM, as well as to our Platinum sponsors, Filecoin uh, Foundation, Hitachi, uh, Siemens, and Zulig Pharmaceutical, as well as all the sponsors that uh, uh, both uh, are, are here to, to lend their support. Many of them also have booths in the sponsor exhibit area, so please check that out through Hopin. Um, I also wanted to remind everyone that uh, all Hyperledger events, uh, as well as all Linux Foundation events are intended to be open, inclusive. We really want to get across that all are welcome here in the Hyperledger community. We have a code of conduct that applies to even virtual events like this. Please read it, please understand it, and please let us know uh, if anything happens during the event that uh, gives you pause uh, or call for concern. Um, with that, uh, I want to just uh, jump into a little bit of framing to help understand uh, one of the unique uh, things about uh, the, the Hyperledger ecosystem uh, has been just how global we've been from day one. And even in the midst of the pandemic, uh, that 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 global uh, uh, sense has continued to, to, to grow. Uh, we have over 180 different meetup groups that are active. We garden these pretty, pretty rigorously. We make sure there's leaders in each community, um, and those are spread across across 81 different countries that host Hyperledger meetups. And this includes countries where even the, there's there's different systems for hosting these uh, types of uh, get togethers, uh, such as in China. Um, and already this year, 60 different virtual meetups have been held so far. Uh, uh, we've even had some face-to-face -face meetups. I'll show you photos from one pretty soon. We've also been launching some regional chapters and across uh, that, that are collections of these different meetup groups. And across all of these, we've touched uh, over three quarters of 100,000 uh, uh, participants in the ecosystem. Uh, and, and this year, we worked really hard to put together um, uh, groups of meetups in different regions, groups of uh, uh, those local communities uh, to help each other uh, uh, get the word out about their events, uh, to help find speakers who could speak in, uh, across the different groups. Um, and we've launched those chapters this year in Latino America, in Italy, uh, in India, where we have a very active community spread across many different cities involving lots of folks from both academia and from the businesses that are based in India, uh, as well as in Africa. Uh, having these chapters together uh, has, has been a, a really key way to build the local communities. And I'll show you one really exciting thing that's also emerged as a result. Uh, and we also recently announced the launch of our community in Japan. Japan has long been a part of the Hyperledger ecosystem. Uh, several uh, companies based in Japan have been on our governing board uh, and helped make sure that we were uh, solidly represented there. Uh, and now uh, the local communities are really starting to blossom and uh, we couldn't be happier to, than, than to have uh, a lot of healthy representation from the community there. Uh, and and of course this year uh, this year uh, has been really uh, a stellar year for the China community. Uh, China has long been a, a core part of the Hyperledger ecosystem. We've long had uh, a technical half of what we do uh, based in uh, China called the T China Technical Working Group, who have been very active on supporting core developments in fabric and other parts of the Hyperledger ecosystem. This year they've started to meet face to face again. These are photos from uh, December's meeting in. Uh, Beijing of the Beijing Hyperledger Meetup Group. I, I can't say anything other than it looks like another planet sometimes to those of us who've been at home operating from Zoom this whole time, but it's really great 
to see uh, uh, folks able to get back together and, and talk about the projects that they're working on and, and all that. Um, and some of the direct result of uh, working with these international communities has been not only helping make sure we're developing you know, interesting content in different languages, you have to speak to people uh, in their first language uh, if you want to, to really reach them with the, uh, the information that we're putting together. Um, and so th there have been 13 different languages used to host meetups uh, in the past year. That's that's really awesome. Uh, we also drove a contribution campaign around um, uh, a couple of different projects. And, and in one that we did for Hyperledger Fabric around the documentation, we worked with many of the people in our meetup communities and beyond to develop translations of the core documentation in eight different languages. Uh, and, and that would not have been possible without the support from our local communities. We also uh, got translation set for the Hyperledger homepage. Uh, not every blog post and everything else has been translated, but at least at the, when it comes to landing on the site, trying to make sense of this community and its and its products and everything like that and the different projects, uh, we hope to have a more welcoming face now to speakers of all the major uh, languages in the world. Um, and finally, we also worked with a community to translate uh, a Hyperledger uh, course um, around a Hyperledger fabric into Spanish. Um, and that that was also really great to see. Um, another aspect of our communities that has you know, long been important and only grew in importance this past year has been the special interest groups that uh, we've been able to play home to. This includes uh, uh, longstanding ones like the, the healthcare working group, which obviously sprung to life in response to the pandemic. Um, but also we've seen a lot of activity in our telecom uh, and our climate action working groups, groups that are today not just hosting you know, every two weeks a conversation about the use cases and uh, case studies where it's been applied to their sector, but are actually starting to, to drive projects in Hyperledger labs focused on their domains. Uh, and I'm really excited about the prospect of new software projects coming out of the labs and becoming projects under the greenhouse at Hyperledger. Uh, we also uh, have invested, again, this is about the story beyond the code and beyond the, the, the immediate core developer community. Um, a big part of that is education and training. Uh, uh, and we've long had training modules on uh, edX uh, for uh, just to help people understand the basics of blockchain for business, to understand how, to, how, to, how self-sovereign identity works with Hyperledger, Indy, and Aries, as well as uh, training and information around Fabric and Sawtooth and courses for those. Now we add to that uh, a new training module, a new some new courseware that we launched uh, this week around Hyperledger Bezu, helping people understand, especially if they're coming from the Ethereum ecosystem, how, how to use that technology to uh, how to use Bezu to deploy uh, permission blockchain networks. So uh, uh, this is really exciting and I think going to be a key part of growing the community around Hyperledger Bezu, but also um, help, uh, with that bridge between the, the, the permission networks and the, and the public networks. Uh, we also have expanded uh, uh, our, uh, a, a part of the Hyperledger website and, and really uh, a part of what we do, which is about helping drive any commercial interest in the technology to the vendor community to go and, and be able to build this technology, build distributed uh, applications and, and data systems for, uh, for anybody who you know, hesitates to climb the learning curve themselves, right? Uh, uh, we are seeing increasing interest from companies who say, we want to deploy this stuff, but we need to figure out who's Incredible in this domain. Who can we work with? I can't hire the talent because it's still hard. There are not enough people have taken our course and, and certifications. Um, so uh, we've developed now a list of 24 different uh, members of the Hyperledger ecosystem who can provide uh, uh, integration support. I, I have products built on top of Hyperledger. All this kind of stuff to help go and deploy uh, Fabric, Bezu, Sawtooth. You know the the different things that that people uh, want to have deployed. Um, and finally, many of you might be asking, uh, you might have a technical inclination, how do I get started? How do I look at what's uh, available? Um, uh, you know, finding those starting points for, for early developers can be a challenge. So there's a, a, a lot of content in the, the sessions that come up today and, and tomorrow, uh, as well as ones that are, are archived, you'll be able to access relating to uh, uh, demos of the software uh, of different Hyperledger projects where, you know, you can, if, you, if you're there at, at the time, you'll be able to meet the maintainers uh, and, and build 
build that personal connection that we know is so important. Um, we also have a presentation specifically on uh, the challenges and, and the opportunity involved in pulling together different language support for different projects. The, the tooling to coordinate with translators is a really interesting and key part of what makes the trend, uh, I, I, uh, projects like this work in, in an open source setting. Um, really quickly, I want to give you just a snapshot of the keynotes from the last segment uh, of, of day two in case you missed them, uh, in case they were at a time that didn't work. Uh, last night, we had a panel on using blockchain technology to fight climate change with a number of people who are presenting here in other sessions at the event. Uh, Dr. Martin Weinstein, Andreas Kind, and Veronica Garcia. That was a ton of fun. Um, then we had a, a conversation between myself and Vitalik Buterin, um, I, I, where we really explored uh, this uh, sense of, you know, what, what does it mean to apply Ethereum to the enterprise? Uh, what does that mean for the developer community, for the open source community that's grown up around that? Um, we also had a, a, a really deep conversation between Marie Mastery from IATA and Drummond Reed, who's the chief trust of, officer of Evernim, about reopening global travel using health credentials and using self-sovereign ID, using many of the technologies we pioneered here at Hyperledger. Today, though, we have an, an exciting series of keynotes lined up for you for the next hour and a half. First, we're going to hear from Rob Palatnik. Rob is the chair of the Hyperledger Governing Board um, and, and leads uh, technology research and innovation for DTCC. I'll give him a separate intro in a bit. Just want to flash ahead to the others. Uh, after him, uh, we'll have Kareem Youssef, uh, who is the general manager for blockchain technologies at IBM. Uh, uh, and he has some really exciting things to announce uh, uh, in, in uh, co contributions to Hyperledger and other activity going on at IBM around blockchain technology. And finally, we'll hear from Mary Lassity, who's the director of the Blockchain Center for Excellence at the Sam Walton School College of Business at the University of Arkansas. Um, she's been studying the application of distributed ledger in supply chains and other systems for a very long time and has uh, re recently written a book on this, uh, actually. So I uh, really wanted to help give everybody here a, a sense of where is this industry heading? What is the big picture? What are all of the opportunities that are emerging out there? Um, do not forget, uh, join. feel free to join the hallway track uh, in Gather Town at any time in between sessions, during breaks, after the sessions end for the day. Uh, uh, many of us are hanging out there. It's a little nerdy and goofy, um, but uh, it feels a little bit like Legend of Zelda, uh, but I like it and uh, hopefully it helps recreate some of the ad hoc conversations that many of you have at the face-to-face -face events until we're able to meet face-to-face -face again. Um, check out the networking feature in Hopin to, to meet other members of the community uh, and be sure and visit the Kiva booth to get uh, your uh, attendee gift, uh, which is uh, credit on the Kiva platform. The links to everything above are in Hopin. So with that, I'd like to transition to our first keynote speaker. Uh, Rob Palatnik is somebody that uh, I've known since being involved in Hyperledger. I admit I didn't know who DTCC was before uh, uh, meeting him and before uh, uh, jumping into this project. Uh, uh, DTCC is one of those really hidden gems. It's part of the, the core connective tissue that makes financial systems work, uh, certainly that makes Wall Street and the, and the equities markets work uh, uh, here in the United States, but also globally. Uh, and so understanding their interest in blockchain technology was a key part for me saying, okay, I've got to dive in and, and figure this out because this is a way that we remake how these core uh, financial systems work. So really eager to have him speak and give his perspective as the chair of the Hyperledger governing board on where he sees the opportunities, where he sees the risks, uh, uh, what gets him excited um, and what he thinks we need to do uh, as a community to continue to, to meet up the opportunity. So with that, let me hand it off to Rob Palatnik. 